Coming up on Talk is Cheap, I'm so excited we're in our new studio. First story we cover was submitted by a user, George Van Tassel. This guy was visited by aliens in the desert and given a formula for time travel. Then we take a look at a dead alien carcass in Russia. Could this be a piece of chicken? I don't think so. And finally, a 290 million year old footprint. Why has the media not covered this? Up next on Talk is Cheap. Welcome to Talk is Cheap, where cheap is talk and talk is cheap. I am Dan Holfeld and I'm joined by Pete Hallblyde, Dusty Long. Thank you for joining us. As you can see, we're in our new studio here. What do you guys think of it? It looks pretty fucking legit, huh? Oh, I'm in love with it. I really am. Oh, absolutely. It looks like we're big time right now. Like we almost kind of know what we're doing, but maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, Dan, oh, you know, and if you don't have like the, the best equipment, how can you become the best at it? Right. right. So, yeah. We got some pretty darn good equipment. Time to step up our game, I guess. Oh, yeah. Blow thought, some mines. I thought I was already there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Might take a Always while. room for improvement, Dusty. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, as you know, we've been having some lot of comments lately, and uh, people say we should check this out. So the first uh, person on our list who sent in, I actually commented on one of our videos, Sherrod Hall. He says... You should look at this George Van Tuss- Tassel, I believe. That's how you say that. George yeah, Van Tassel. I would say that, sure. Have you ever, guys, any of you ever heard of him at all? No, I haven't. I can't say I have come across him. I didn't either. So, well, he was born in 1960, or this aired, actually, this uh, interview aired in 1964, but he was born in 1910, died in 1978. And I want to state here that he does not make any money from these talks. He specifically says that in this interview. But what he talks about is pretty... I thought it was a joke at first. As a matter of fact, I'll play this first intro here. And then it seems like it might be kind of, okay, this is just satire or something. But but later on, it gets better. I've got a man now, here and now. One of the men who claims fervently that he has met these people from outer space has talked to them and has been given secrets of things such as a time machine from men from outer space. You'll meet this man after this plebeian and earthly message. Short intro. Just so that, that guy really isn't George, though. He's there. the interviewer. That, that's, yeah, he's, the, he's, the host he's or whatever. Jack. I kind of like Jack. him. <laughs> I kind of like him. There's people, there's a comment on, like, all oh, this interview is being an asshole or whatever, but... He kind of like grills them, and he he actually thinks you know we're thinking all oh, this is kind of bullshit, and he's asking those questions like oh, that. Really? So I, I awesome. like the way he yeah. does the interview. To summarize it, uh, an alien ship landed at George's airport that he runs in the desert, Giant Rock, California. Ali- uh, ship lands, aliens are on. They give him a formula for time travel. Okay, like how to do it. Like an, a mathematical equation yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, it's actually a, an equation. Okay. And I, I, I'll bring that clip up when he talks about it. And he was a, they were able, when they did it, to play broadcast back, like for, from the first bro- broadcast on TV. They didn't have an antenna on it. So back then, well, antenna is nothing to us now. But yeah, back right? then, it's like, oh, but how are they getting the signal? You know, they don't know. So he talks about the ship here at eight minutes. So this is George here. Yep. Scott Jackson. <laughs> Uh, Jack, the formula came from a ship that landed at my airport in 1953 on August the 24th, uh, which had four people aboard it that came from another planet. I'm breathless. Well, you're not only breathless, I was breathless. But I'm cynical, too. Well, that's fine. That's the way to be. In fact, I'm a bigger skeptic than you are of many things. I'm an unbeliever. Convince me that this really happened to you. Just like the well, way uh, <laughs> this, this thing is very similar to a thing that's happened in our biblical records where uh, a Lord presented Moses with a pattern to build a tabernacle. He, they came out of the sky. They handed him stone tablets. And this phenomena that's taking place today is as old as our history. 
as our civilization. This isn't anything new that's occurring. It's something that's uh, being continued in another time of crisis when uh, conditions affecting the people of this planet are reaching a point where somebody has to take care of the situation. Now, I don't intend in any way to be disrespectful of black. It's funny how 60 years ago they were talking feel? about the dire plight of the, the people of the planet and stuff. Do you, you feel know? that you're some kind of Moses receiving a new... I think that kind of goes back to, what was it? I've heard somewhere like they'll put something in the consciousness of the humans. If they want us to discover it, it's actually, that's how Einstein will stumble upon stuff. Because it's actually in the uh, abyss, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, of the mind. And you know, people pick up on it and then whoever takes it to... Grabs it and does something with it. You know, it's interesting you say that because I read a report that said that when something is thought of, and they say you come up with some new idea or whatnot, and then all of a sudden it becomes much easier for the whole world to be able to to work on that. Mm. If it's not thought of, it's hard to think of something that's brand new and original. Yeah, everybody can improve upon it then once, but yeah, the, once the base it's thought, idea yeah. is there. Yeah. It's really interesting about human consciousness and that. Okay, here he's going to uh, discuss uh, what they look like. But I want to go back to that night in 1953. Tell me, where did this happen for people... Who, who, who haven't had to talk or seen you yet. It happened uh, on my airport, which I've operated for the last 16 years, uh, at Giant Rock Airport, 17 miles north of Yucca Valley in California, mm-hmm. or 40 miles north of Palm Springs. Now, this is a private airport for small aircraft, is it? This is an airport used both by the military and private uh, aircraft. You own this airport, then? I lease this airport from the United States government. I've operated it for 16 years since I retired from the flight test business in the aviation. Right now. How old are you now, by the way, George? I'm 54, Jack. Got uh, three grown daughters, married, and 11 grandchildren. You don't mind if I ask you the stock question? I know that you've been asked every obnoxious question question that can ever have been asked. You've never been treated for any form of emotional upset. I've never had an emotional upset other than women. (laughs) <laughs> they had problems back then with women too believe it or not except that night in yucca flats and not yucca flats a giant rock when this uh, ship appeared now give me the details john because i'm never never tired of hearing the details of a man who says he has seen creatures from another world well actually jack this was as simple as uh, crossing a street and getting hit by a car after it's over you're the victim of the circumstance and uh, I didn't see the ship land. One of my son-in-laws, uh, there wasn't my son-in-law at that time, uh, saw it come down. Uh, another man on the airport heard it, and uh, he wasn't where he could see it. And uh, the man got off of the ship and approached me before I even knew there was a ship down. Uh, where were you then? What time of day or night was it? It was 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, approximately a full moon, which is like daylight on the desert. Were you walking about outside or what? No, I was sound asleep when he awakened me. This man awakened you? Well, something awakened me. So you got up out of your bed? I got out of my bed and went aboard the ship at his request. This man, in what language did he converse with you? He talked to me in the best English equivalent to Ronald Coleman. And he met you there and he said, what did he say, come with me to my ship or what? <laughs> no, he said, I asked him what he wanted uh, because we have a lot of people who come in stuck in the sand and broken axles and whatnot. And uh, I asked him what he wanted and he said, my name is Solgonda and I would be pleased to show you our craft. Solgonda? Solgonda. Did you, was the craft visible to you at this time? It was when he stated this, I saw beyond him the ship, which well, I hadn't seen before. What did you see? A bell, a bell-shaped uh, type of uh, anti-gravity uh, ship that they operate as a scout ship out of the big carriers. How big? Uh, this was 36 feet in diameter and 19 feet high. And where was it, on the ground? No, it was hovering 10 feet off the ground. And how did you, did you go into this ship? I walked with him to a spot underneath it, and uh, an anti-gravity beam took me up through a hole in the bottom of it. You're telling me at 2 o'clock in the morning in Giant Rock Airport, you walked underneath this hovering ship, and whammo, you went no, up inside. No, you didn't go whammo, you went just about as slow as a local elevator run. Um, I like the way he fucking doesn't really like the way he interviews him. Yeah, it's just yeah. like he, it's right to the point. I yeah, fucking and he love kind it. of exaggerates a little bit or whatever, but yeah, to, to, to try to get him yeah. upset or whatever. I think he's doing a good job at it. 
Do we ever hear a description of what they were wearing? Uh, he never said any of what they were wearing. They ain't um, worried about fashion back in these days. No, no. Everyone wore a black suit. A matter of fact, he said they look exactly like us. So this is the groups we were talking about that can walk on the street and you can't even tell yeah. they're different. Okay. Yep, yep. He I said, forget what they're, what are they called. Typically they're blonde, aren't they? Weird. Nordics. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. Nordic kind. Um, yeah, he says the only way he knew that they weren't uh, humans mm-hmm. is because they could disappear in front of their eyes. And he did this. Well, besides the fact they had an alien ship with anti-gravity beams, too. Probably. Well, not everybody's yeah. seen that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. sure, that's but probably something. To, yeah. All right, here he talks about that formula that he oh, gave yeah, that's right. disappearing. That's right. Was this the guy who gave you the formula for the time machine? That's the man. And uh, what form did the formula take? Did he implant it in no, your don't mind by this. telepathy? Or did he give you something written in he, English? He spoke it to me verbally. And you remembered this? There's nothing to it to remember. Will you tell me now? The yeah. formula for a time machine. F equals 1 over T. F equals 1 over T. F Got being it. frequency and T being time. And this enables me to, to, to go back to the time of Caesar's armies uh, conquering Britain. Well, it would enable a mathematician to work this out, yes. Why? So it must take some... Frequency is... Equals 1 over T. F equals 1 over T, yep. So frequency being F and then T being time, of course. You'd have to have the right frequency to even start. I There's think a units thing. that what, what kind of units do you end up with at the end of that? It'd be hertz per second. Or hertz over second. So you know more about it than I do already. You want to build a time machine? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I got an old refrigerator box reminds, out back. We'll start with that. This kind of reminds me of a Napoleon Dynamite where they had the the, yeah, the crystal little, and the crotch oh, shot. Yeah. The crotch shot. Yeah. He was using, he's like, wait, I forgot to put the crystals, the crystals in. in. Yeah. <laughs> no, crystals actually, I don't know if you ever used any at all. Crystal meth? No. Crystals. <laughs> I just happen to have one in my pocket. Oh, very cool. Uh, this actually helps me on a hangover. Sounds weird. Yeah. What but kind of crystal is that? This I mean, is a quartz crystal. Quartz, okay. Yep. Like if you have that gut rot the next day, I can put it right on my stomach and it, it helps a lot. Really? Which is like, you know, until you deal with these, you can actually feel a frequency shift when you kind of hold it if you're open to that. Pretty crazy, but... Do you have any extras of those I could buy? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, hold on maybe, to that one for a little bit. on uh, Thursdays <laughs> or in Friday mornings, maybe. <laughs> This doesn't take off. We'd always just start selling crystals outside of bars at about two o'clock. It's just it's just hard to believe because it sounds gimmicky, but yep. I've felt it, you know, and, and it changes when you use it. Well, there's a lot of uh, shamans or shamans and all that type of thing. A lot of it deals with crystals, and um, it's in- actually interesting. I've done a little research on it myself, and yeah, there's a lot of that crystals, uh, certain rocks, elements, and those types sure. of things. I Help mean, you align your chakra, get your, and your as, energy, as, right. yeah. which is interesting because in Buddhism, I mean, because I do practice a little Buddhism, it's all about you know aligning and being centered yep. and all those types of things. So, and they use um, crystals and whatnot yeah. to help that along. So, yeah, all all of them and everything else. Now, I've never used it. Hell, it's hard right. for me to even meditate half the damn time. But you know. On top of that, there has to be a little something, you know, even if it's just the power of the mind is what I was kind of kind of considered too. That, that, that could yeah. be, a, yeah, that's that like a, a, focus, to a focus point. I think yeah, to, the, absolutely. to the point you have to be open to it too. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Very good. All right, he's going to talk about the government having this stuff since 1956. The United States government's been flying uh, anti-gravity ships since 1956, uh, been acclaimed. Or the fact that there's a crater on the moon with a base in it. Since 1954, we've known this. Well, but let's crazy. get, first of all, the U.S. Why haven't the FBI clapped you in communicado for breaking secrets that they want to keep secret in the United States? Well, possibly uh, because they know this information is going to get out eventually anyway, and uh, what I say won't make any difference. Now, that particular night when you uh, had this experience, uh, did you call the police? Did you call the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the White House? Well, I'm 17 miles from the nearest phone, Jack, and uh, the nearest phone would get me to the sheriff's office, and it'd take them about 40 minutes to get out there. Oh, I thought all the moon stuff had been debunked. And the Here's a picture of that crater really and the moon he was talking about. The, the, yeah, it's shitty. You can't really the see it. The Crater. This is 55 miles long, and uh, 
oval-shaped. It's in the Merrimorum uh, Sea, or on the edge of it. Uh, since 35 years ago, they wondered why this particular crater had these lines in it. And with a magnification, which you can get with a larger telescope, this is what they found. These lines are tubes laying on the surface of this crater and running under some of the mountain ridges. There are three large dome-shaped structures in here. These tubes run clear outside of the crater. Do you see any of that in there? Now, here's the thing. I've done a lot of this research on bases on the moon. This is one of my, one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. um, and this, uh, you'll see in the middle here, they have that, like a three-prong, that white deal. Yeah, it looks almost like a trident or letter M or yeah, something like that. Yeah, that is, I've seen this a hundred times over and over on different reports and different research I've done. Uh, and then the tubes and everything else in the dome. I don't know if I'm looking at the same thing I've seen before, but it's interesting that that, that really just popped for me. I mean, that's something I've seen in different reports. Um, but most of what I research, honestly, is on the back side, the dark side of the moon. You know, uh, but, yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. I don't see it right, other than that because I've seen it before. And that's the big thing is, like, when we look at Mars and we say we saw the rabbit on Mars or anything else, the human brain automatically wants to uh, to make something out of something that's yeah, not assign there. Assign it to something it knows. Exactly yeah. right. So then we see something. That's so, yeah, it looks like um, it might look like a dome, but it could have been, you know, actually a concave shape or something like that. So that's always kind of kind of hard to, to say yay or nay on. Let's see if there's any Google images about his moon crater. There it is. There it is. Still, it's not very... Click on click the second one. Yeah, the second one over. Click on that one once. Is that it? Yeah, interview of a man who received. There, that's the that's the crater. I'm not liking that picture very well though. It's like what the fuck. Now see, you can almost see they were taking this from another angle, say from the right more, and the shadow was right. That ridge that's on that right, right in the center, could make the make that shape of the trident. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you know, what's interesting here is what uh, what George claimed were tubes on the surface look more like indentations. Mm -hmm. What I find really interesting about this photo in general is this is the moon, right? Mm -hmm. it, what formed those, like, valleys? Falling <laughs> rocks. Oh, <laughs> well, when they had the, the, the meteorite impacts, that what you have in the middle is that, of the ridge there is uh, the imp where the impact was, and then it superheats and then melts that the... Uh, rock, so you can create yeah. magma. So then, what happens is while it's cooling, I'm thinking is probably where you get these uh, little those worm lines, lines or yeah. whatever. Kind of, you know, like a lava, kind of like water will flow in a certain mm -hmm. way. Now that could be completely wrong. That could be a damn, you know, ATV track for some fucking, you know, alien college kids or something. They go down oh, there yeah, and drive sure. around. Maybe it's know. a getaway resort yeah. for the yeah, right. Because there's people. not, you, like you said, there's nothing on the outside of the crater that has trails like that. Well, in the upper right of that photo, there kind of is. Oh, just a little bit there, yeah. Those are pretty massive, though. I mean, they're pretty. Yeah, if that's fifty-five miles across, I mean, that's still a pretty big gully up there. Hmm. Interesting. Doesn't much look like a moon base, though, does it? From that. No. Puts this picture here to shit. Yeah. Or shame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. Is that one closer? It looks a little closer. Well, it's also got a. Uh... Look at that top right corner. It has like a alien head type thing on there. Can you go back to that other picture? Yeah, what's that? Maybe. It, oh, I bet you that's oh, that it's crater it's, at the top. Yeah, it's the crater that's yep. just catching the light just right off it. I bet you. You're right. All right, this is the supposed time machine that he was working on. This is a picture of the uh, machine we're building down there. This structure is actually up. We're working now on the parts on the equipment that operate it. This rim around here has armatures 57 feet in diameter, which will be better than four times bigger than the biggest armatures ever made before. But these, is that the uh, place where you did the experiments? By the way, how old were these television programs you pulled back out of time and space? Well, uh, the oldest one was six years back because uh, the television was six years old when this was done. And what program was it? Do you remember? I don't remember what program, but I know that on checking up on some of the stations that ARC found that uh, the uh, station no longer existed. It was out of business. Let's get down to some more basics now. Uh, are you making a, 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 a lucrative living out of traveling around the world eventually? He's, he's not making a living on it. Yeah. <laughs> so that, what, what happened to the time machine? I want to talk. Built? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. All oh, right. Um, on. 
I should have had I'm it. I'm glad you, you, I've got all these good questions here because it, I'd also like to talk to his son-in-law who supposedly saw the, the vehicle land on, in the airport to begin with. They actually have a website for this thing because people go there. It's basically a domed wooden structure. It's got a rotating metal apparatus around it. Mm-hmm. Constructed a wood, concrete, glass, fiberglass. It's lacking even metal screws in it. But um, here's the interesting part. <laughs> the, they call it the Integratron. Which is, I don't know. Integratron. <laughs> Integratron. They could have maybe done a little better, better but, with the name. But. This, the, it was never fully completed due to his sudden death a few weeks before the official opening. Oh, shit. He didn't die with a catheter wrapped around his neck or some shit. <laughs> Maybe <didn't>. something <laughs> weird happened. Yeah, right. But it sounded like the equipment that was going to be used for time travel was miraculously disappeared and stuff. Like so. everything yeah. else. People that go in there say they claim to be rejuvenated, rejuvenated when they go in there. It's like a shower of high energy. Yeah, a fountain of youth, if you will. So right now, the people that bought it are basically, you know, you pay a fee, you go in there, and there's no well, intention there to right like there. try to pick up where he left off or any of that. Huh? No. Bought by the Carl sisters because they don't even know where how hell he was. At. He was basically funding the whole thing himself, and he wasn't the richest guy either. Okay, so yeah, neuroacoustics, music, energy healing, alternative health and spirituality. So it's it's kind of deviated from its initial intent, and now it's kind of a new age yeah. healing kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, and you can the uh, the fees are they look a little spendy. Let's see where is it. We can rent it hourly, like a CD <laughs> hotel. <laughs> Take a trip down there. Music recording, meditation, yoga classes. Two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Yes, yeah. yeah. kind of. I don't know. People that go in there say that. Well, I suppose if you have ten people, that's only twenty five dollars per hour. Let's see. Do they got a? I mean, I suppose if you want to get married to have a a, a get together at a really cool place. Yeah, that's with some be, kind of a neat 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 history. Or yeah, whatever. you're gonna you're gonna definitely gonna be remembered. So okay, there's Here's some the inside, inside pictures. Yeah. So then, besides this an initial broadcast that they supposedly got you know from that he got from six years ago that he talked about briefly the te- television broadcast that they supposedly received this is just completely gutted building now it's just a shell yeah yeah because it's so like, i think like this he had equipment and shit in there and now it's there's yeah, nothing it looks like it's a wood dome that must be uh whatever with for the frequency yeah. or whatever hmm. yeah that, that other picture real quick this is where like if you stand right in the center of this mm-hmm that's where you feel it the most, I guess. And they say it's kind of weird. And you can see they got the beds laying down with their heads going around there. It's too. interesting because this dome, um, if you look around the world, there's places where they've built pyramids and domes just like this for that same reason. I was reading, I think that in Russia, there's a they built a pyramid. It doesn't look like this type of pyramid. The angles are a bit more um, acute, a little bit straight. Uh, yeah, acute obtuse i'm cute yeah it is i'm cute but anyway so they've gone in there to do uh research and, and test and they put antibiotics in there and plants and whatnot and they last like two three weeks longer people go in there very sick and then they take these pills and then you know they stay a day or two and they come out feeling much better so they say um that domes like this with that central point and that type of thing and then pyramids also uh, create some kind of a, a spiritual energy, whatever you want to call it, but it does help in these types of things. Now, I've read a little bit about it, and I'll be honest, some of it seems a little too new age for me. I can't, you know, even being, I practice Buddhism, so I believe in, you know, chakra and, and centering and all this other stuff, some of that. And I think it, it really depends on wh- where I get the information from because if you have somebody that's sitting there with flowers in their hair, you know, long uh-huh. hair, they got some kind of banjo in the back playing, it's Come join us, and you'll feel yeah, better. More I, like a loot. I seems kind of get it. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> I'm instantly like, really. If you want people to believe you, try to be a little bit more professional, a little bit more serious. Right. But, yeah. you know, yeah. but so you can be taken seriously. Yeah, yeah very yep. true, very true. But yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, thanks again, Sherrod Hall, for mentioning that to us. Yes, and thank you. That was excellent. If yeah, there's something I missed cool. about it that you thought I should have covered, I'll throw it in the comments below, and we can. There's nothing yeah. saying we can't revisit it. Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. Maybe we should go down and visit. Yeah. Uh, we California? can have a picnic yeah, in the middle. The, 
two hundred dollars. No, I ain't gonna pay it. <laughs> if you would like yeah, to fund a trip uh, for the for the cast and yeah. crew of Talk is Cheap to go to California and check out this, we'll do an on uh, on site episode. Yeah, we'll have a picnic right in the yeah. center. Please, uh, please feel free to contact us through our, our YouTube channel, and uh, we'll tell you where to send the check. Yeah, and I have other expenses too. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna go ahead and do that, yeah, rent, car payments, <laughs> anything you want to help us out with. <laughs> yeah. Warning, the government does not want you to view this channel, yep. but by God, we we're, will do it. We're going to do it. No one stops me with red letter yeah. text box and white lettering. Yep, just like speed limits, right? Okay, so everybody knows if you go on YouTube, if you go on the internet and you Google alien videos and stuff, you'll get a million of them. Some of them are pretty hokey. Some of them are terrible. Some of them are a little more compelling. Um, I came across this one and supposedly it was debunked, but we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about what the people that debunked it said it was made out of. And maybe we'll go back and look at it. But this video is supposedly a couple Russian dudes out in the woods in the snow and they come across this little miniature dead alien creature. So, uh, it's just one of those videos that are kind of, kind of, they're not as easily just say, okay, this is fake. It's a CGI. You know, it was pretty, some, if, if it's a hoax, it was pretty well put together. I obviously can't speak very much Russian. I know a little bit, but not very much. I could never function yeah, in Russian That's more than society. what I got. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, you know, um, but, uh, you know, when I look at these videos, I listen to like their reactions, the emotions that they're going through. Um, you can get some, uh, tell how genuine somebody is, you know, usually by their initial reaction. So Very true. Um, it's a minute and a half long about, so it won't take us long to get through. We'll go ahead and do a quick view of it. Didn't and you send this to me? I think I might have. Yeah, I, was say, I, I like this too. Yeah, I, think it's, I think I might have uh, cheated and sent it to you a couple uh, I'll a pretend couple like I didn't see, edit yeah, this. Yeah. I didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, But no, it's pretty a pretty interesting video as far as alien videos go. So here we go. Вот, вот там нашли, короче, ну, смотри. Пойдем Где нашли? Ну, вон, 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 Сейчас все проходим, смотри. Вон она, сука, безобразие лежит. Чейс. Сейчас погоди. <laughs> да вот, ебать, часа два назад хули, ебаный, бро. Собака хули унюхала, сука. So we'll just watch it from there. I think they got this down here. Yeah, there's a... I was, thank you. I was gonna say there's an option. Что за нахуй лежит? Смотри, сука. Да я хуй знаю, погоди, смотри. It's got a belly button. Do we know how old this is? The, the video? The video itself. Uh, I'm sure it, we could see when it was posted, but it seems like fairly modern. It's not old-timey film, you know. Decent macro. That's... When you first look at it, it's like, oh, that's kind of a dummy, but I guess once you get cl on closer on it, it's... Now, when I watched this, first thing I thought, to be honest, was this is um, frog legs with a uh, chicken bone, and they kind of all put it all together. Um, however, I will be honest, when they get really close to that, you can actually see the vein in the neck and the different colorization, and it all kind of works together. A little translucent yep. skin. It all works, too. There's not like that, because I could be like, oh, it's frog legs and a chicken bone. I can do that. It's, it right. doesn't look like that. See, no, that's... and aliens can be killed, people. Don't be scared. Salt. What? <laughs> I, see, you know, I think this is the one that I that I I look I, I watched before, and it's funny, Dusty, you said that because people claim this is just a chicken carcass that's been manipulated to make it look like an alien. Okay, yeah, that's where I would go first with it. Be honest. Um, you know, I will say that. In my in my days, I have raised and butchered, or been uh, participated in the raising and butchering of many many chickens. Oh my God! Really? And I that would take some mending. <laughs> yeah, that would take some mending. Okay, because you know a chicken's think of a chicken skin. Okay, because mm. you've either got this. Yeah, right? <laughs> like you've got the skin or you got the insides, and that right. doesn't look like chicken meat to me. So we're we're dealing with the skins and the in the carcass, and where are all of the the bumps from all the pin feathers, you know. Well, that's why I was saying it looked to me like uh, frog legs because they're smooth and they're. Uh, but you're not gonna get that. Doesn't look like a frog to me. No, that it's it's no. 
I mean, that kind of maybe looks like a chicken leg, but you know, if it's an alien creature, how the hell do we know what they're supposed to look like? You know, I don't know. In the in the end, it's a very interesting video. Oh, I like this one. Yeah. And I and wonder what happened to it if it is real. They grilled it. That, tell me that don't look good. Maybe he got shot. His leg is missing. No, no, he got ta- attacked by uh, uh, mm. an animal. You know, you know that could be. You know, I don't even know the. I would back say st- animal. But I don't even know the backstory other than these two Russian guys. Just walking through the woods. Found it. Yeah. If you go back to the beginning of the video, you can kind of see the hole that it's in. Oops. Well, don't you think that flesh looked like it was tore? Yeah, it could have been animals, maybe, right? Like they're just walking home. They come over so here. Then it's in this kind of little hole area there. I'm guessing that whatever attacked it, drug it to that den. Yeah, because it kind of looks like there's some den or something. Yeah. Then it didn't taste so good in the leg, and then he just said, fuck that. Or it was scared off by these two guys, and that's why it's where it's at. Oh, you think it's that fresh, huh? Well, the only problem with that being that fresh is not a, there's not a blood splatter. And, to, and the, the belly button is interesting to me, too. Who goes through the trouble of putting a belly button into a chicken skin fake alien, right? Very true. I mean, I, I guess I don't see necessarily any... And the thing sort of it is, with that, the skull and, and see the veins and everything else, it would be very difficult, in my opinion at least, to go ahead and have the the skull like that. I don't see where you're going to find something like that and then attach it to something that looks Cause It's human. a seamless transition, yep. too, you know, and the translucence of the skin, seeing like a little bit what's underneath it, which looks badly bruised to me. It looks like there's a lot of fluid and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, to me, I would say that it was attached somehow. The arm is impressively long. Yep, it sure is. I really like that. And when you sent that to me, I got all like giddy and whatnot too. I was like, "Ooh, yeah, I like it's, this." It's, it's interesting because it's not your run-of-the-mill alien footage, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, it, it's not the tall grays. It's not the Nordics. It's not some cheesy CGI thing of, of something walking along. So it was it was unique and different. So uh, when you talk to some of these folks that are I'll say a little more convinced of the overwhelming alien pre- presence on the planet, you know, and there's what 70 different types of species or whatever some people claim. So, who's to say that that this isn't one of those? And when you look at Native American lore and lore of the Middle East, the, the, go, the yeah. Asia as well, they always talk about little people. Little people, fairies, yeah. you, know, you know, Ireland has really big and uh, cuz I'm being being Irish, you know. Yeah. Don't mess with a circle of rocks or a, a circle of uh, trees and whatnot. You don't walk into those areas, mm-hmm. you know, especially if it's a circle because of the only spirits that live there, yada, yada, yada. And, I mean, our cherub, or, uh, every, every religion, I don't, I don't want to list them all, but has little people that you don't fuck with most times, mm-hmm. which is interesting. But, but they also have to help out their shoemaker. You know, the shoemaker, he had the little people that helped make shoes and old folk yep. tale I heard of. Well, the Keeblers, so, they they had a bunch of people making Keeblers. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> making <crap. laughs> that was a uh, money scheme there. And yeah. then, on top of that, it's like even in human history, because I, you know, I still, I, I believe in the, the giants and all that other stuff. It actually, I think, brings into my topic. But, you know, we are so de- dead set in understanding that we know everything, that we're the, mm-hmm. the pinnacle of where we're at. So, you know, when you throw something out there, it's like, whoa. You're talking about little people, man. It doesn't you were talking the other day about the hominids that are hobbits, the hobbit yeah, sized hominids. Yep. You know, there's no emphasis. Yeah, there you go. Yep. I know how much you like that stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah right mean, on. Yep. This guy says here too. It could be fake, but doesn't look like a chicken to me. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you it looks more like it a It looks like leg. they're kind of split on uh liking and disliking. Yeah. Hey, remember, always thumbs up. That's what helps the show is out, just thumbs up. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, yep, that's what I got, a little short and sweet one, but uh, something awesome. interesting. Definitely interesting, I, yeah. Looking forward to some other people's thoughts, you know. Um, yeah, we we like comments. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Although I haven't commented to that one guy yet. I did. Did you? You didn't do it, so I was like, I better do well, it. Well, I was going to. <laughs> I do stuff. It was kind of <laughs> a little directed at you, but I'll, I'll, I'll that's, look what, at that's the one you, com- you said no comments on. Oh, yeah. It was like, here's <laughs> a comment. <laughs> it was like a page long. See, I told you it would work. <laughs> yeah. He was yelling at me too. Don't do that. Then what happens? Bunch well, of comments. Man. Yep. That's why you pay me uh, the no money. Maybe it's the reverse psychology. So, hey, I know what I'm doing. All right. Yeah. So here's what's going on. I got myself. Uh, that's right. I got myself an article here that I looked up actually just the other day. Um, I love that the idea that we have been around the you know on Earth for much longer than we think. And on top of that, I love the idea that uh, 
we were once more advanced than we are now. So I was searching through some of my uh, old research and some of the things I have saved and whatnot, and then this popped up. Uh, actually, th- it wasn't this one. I'm going to scroll down right quick. Hey, what the heck? No. Shh. Scroll down right quick. Okay. I hate Apple. I don't know why it's doing that. This is the one that uh, that I actually have. This is in. You have this? Uh, well, it's in my research. Oh, in my okay. file. <laughs> I had to clarify that one. If I had this, that would be so awesome. <laughs> this is in Africa. It is a giant foot. I mean, this. there's a guy next to it. Yeah, it's like six feet tall or something. Yeah, huge. You can see the indentations of where the feet or the toes are. You have this, the curvature of the foot. This is, I mean, and this is like a six foot foot. <laughs> six foot foot. That makes sense, right? Um, this is in Africa. You can walk up to it. Now, people have said that it, um, it's it's from the rain and, and yeah, the weather and whatnot. Yeah, a bunch whatnot. of erosion speculation. Exactly. And, and However, you don't have erosion around the rock whatsoever, you know, and these types of things. Uh, people actually come up here and leave... Um, uh, what is that? Trinkets and stuff. Uh, like an gifts. offering. Like an offering. Whatever, That's yeah. what I was, where I was looking for. So uh, this is what I was actually going to go back to, and this is what I was going to cover today. And then uh, when I was looking up this article, then this article came up, and this, we had this, this foot. This one, to me, is much more compelling than the last one. Of course, because, you know, you know the big foot is the big, really big one is really hard to r- wrap your head around versus. Yeah, because you're talking like an 80-foot humanoid human, creature, yeah. which is even tough for those of us entertaining yeah. the, the thoughts of giants to, exactly yeah. to leave, exactly so. yeah you get to about 12 15 feet and you're pretty much drawing that line yep. so and 80 foot i mean that would be a huge huge bed uh plus all the other things that are involved with it but anyway so 290 million year old human footprint has researchers scratching their heads this is a human footprint it is in rock this is in is this in california no, this is in new mexico where they found this um as you can plainly tell, the, the, the biggest thing about this, because I'm going to jump right into the meat and bones of this, this is a modern foot. If you were to look at the, the evolution scary scale and how our feet and we develop, yep, yep. this is modern. This is not your, uh, you, Pete, you should know all those homo whatever. Yeah, yeah um, because, you know, the, the, the big sapien, toe sapien. was more like a thumb starting out yep. slowly brought us way in. It, yeah, it sure looks like a modern footprint. A, I'd also like to point out that the spaces between the toes as well mm-hmm. is indicative of a uh, uh, humanoid, I'll say, a homo or whatever. Um, <laughs> a hominid, a homo sapiens hominid. or whatever, or other hominids as well. Yes, yes. Um, of a life without shoes. We wear shoes every mm-hmm. day. So our toes, when we put them in sand, next time you look, look, they're all crunched together. Yep. But you go over to Africa, South America, uh, Asia, where tribes or, or people are living that aren't don't wear shoes. And they're, yep. when they leave their footprints, you can see a gap in between each toe. So it Very is true. indicative of somebody that is not... Accustomed to wearing right, shoes. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, I read about that. Uh, shoes, uh, they, a lot of people say we should never have started wearing shoes, actually. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really bad, bad made them weak. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe that's why the Of course, don't. Uh, there's not really much. This is a great, I mean, it's a really quick read. I'm not going to read it. You guys can do it. Uh, it's in New Mexico, discovered in 1987. Um, there's other fr- fossilized impressions of birds and other animals there. So this is, you know, indicative of the right, you know, fossil remains and everything else. So it's really hard to go ahead and say that this is not. So they just carbon dated that rock. That's how they figured out the. Uh, well, of course, when you when you're doing archaeology, you look at what else is uh, on that layer. So of course, yeah, the car- you can carbon date. You can co- go back and count the layers of, of sediment, and then on top of that, you look at other fossils that are on there. Uh, all um, most, if not all, archae- archaeological digs. They actually go ahead and they uh, some will come out and they make you dig another hole, um, 70, 50, whatever it is, yards away or whatever. And then they try to see if you can find the same thing at that same level. And then you have a, a, a site because then you can prove that it's not just some uprising. In yeah, some yada. heave or something. Exactly. And well, what's interesting about this, though, is in, you know, in the paragraph there, it says that it occurred in a time period which occurred long before man or birds or dinosaurs existed or were known to exist on this planet. Yeah. You know. and, that, and this goes and supports my argument that I think we have been um, advanced once before. To How be mainstream was this? Do they try to bury stuff like this? Like, why isn't this on like the news? Oh, absolutely. Well, that's a whole other show. About yeah, the, I mean, I can get into that. Yeah, I'm just talking about giants cover-ups. alone. Yeah. yeah, the cover-ups of Smith, the Smithsonian. The Philadelphia U- Museum has covered up giants uh, found in uh, Nebraska or someplace. Smithsonian covered the giants that were found here in Wisconsin. Yeah, the mound builders. Um, yeah, I mean, these constantly. And, uh, the horn and out skulls. West too. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say the horn skulls. There, There's uh, uh, skulls that were found with actually four horns. Um 
And yeah, again, these were, you know, giant people or overly tall. They had horns like, like deer antlers growing out. And uh, they're found in Indian, Indian burial grounds, actually, out in the southwest. And again, the government came out, Smithsonian, gathered it up, said we're going to do research. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, you are no longer able to dig up uh, Indian burial grounds. I mean, this is to, to, to support and, you know, be respectful of the Indians. But this was after they started digging in and found these things. So it takes a little digging. Yep. You know, modern day scientists don't like this. This is this this throws away all of our traditional classic views of what's going on in the world. And you know, once you've dedicated 80, 40, 30 years of your lifetime to prove that, you know, uh, dinosaurs became you know flight animals with feathers or something, right? And then someone says, "Well, here, explain this rock or explain these um parts that we like mm-hmm. so much." Yes, it's it's a huge knock to their you know ego and well, and, and even going a level, but. Beyond that, too, if mm-hmm. if these types of footprints and, uh, you know, giants and little people and stuff are, are acknowledged and discovered, it's going to send the population this, like, fit of questioning, what else don't you know? And the more we deviate from Uncle Sam knows best, oh, yeah. the less power uh, you know, the people that control this country and, you know, I'll even say have their part in controlling the, the world. That's less control they have over us, Very true. The, the people. They don't want us to think. That's the last thing they want us to do. Mm, absolutely. That's, that's why right. all of our news channels are all propaganda. I mean, it's they want us dumb, and they don't want us to work 40, 80 hours you know, a day or a week. Making widgets yeah. for, Making, the, for the, the boss man. That's, yep. that's They're worried about surviving, me, questioning anything else. Oh, we're in a slave race. I mean, yeah. if you were to really look back at it, if we were 100 years ahead and we were more advanced than we are now and look back at what's happening right now, we're a bunch of slaves. We're, we're working for pennies, and mm. we're not going anywhere. You know, they, they just you know, they just let us off the plantation every now and then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's what our yeah. vacation is. Yeah. You get two yeah. weeks vacation a year here, go off and do everything off the reservation, then get your ass back here and go back to work. And that works because we think we need to work so we can have these things and blah, 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 that, that mode That of we're thinking. told that we need to have, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. exactly. you, know, you know, computers are nice, big flat screen TVs are nice, but really to be happy, you don't need them, you know, no. and it's awful nice to have those is, creature yeah. comforts and, and that sort of stuff. But you never see a guy crying on a ski do. Right. No, you know, right? right? Oh, that's good. Uh, I'm gonna not while he's riding sometime. it, but if he's off it, probably. Well, yeah, when it gets re- repoed because you know he he spent too much time playing <laughs> and not enough time you know working. So then 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 that same thing kind of goes back to this. You know, these scientists and these people they don't want us to think that maybe we were more advanced at one time. You know, God to, forbid. To reiterate that point, did you ever like clean out your house, get rid of a bunch of junk? Oh, in the yeah, I yeah. Have, don't you feel better after you do it? Like you do, and it's it's tough to get to that point and to actually yeah. say I haven't I haven't used this thing in five years. It's gone. Yeah, you know, but yeah, I, I sold a few things, got rid of it. Just feels like a relief. Yeah, you know, it's not sitting I, in the. I closet. hope the girlfriend doesn't see this episode because she's been hounding me to do that exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> Since I moved to the area, I have not gone through a scrubbing of the house, and, really? it, and it needs one bad. I got <laughs> stuff that I I don't I should have never gotten in the first place. Oh. I can't get rid of anything. I'm a, I'm a hoarder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Guns yeah, well, I, and video you games. You watch stuff. some of those shows. It's like, how can they live like that? Yeah. Oh, um, I know. I couldn't imagine walking into my house. I mean, it's. I think everybody's house is untidy. You know, of course, but there's like there's untidy, then there's like dirty. Where hey, we got to clean, and then there's hey, I'm a hoarder. Please walk over seven feet of garbage to get into some place. We yeah. have a little you narrow You might have walkway. to belly crawl next to the ceiling to yeah. get into the kitchen. I've heard of stuff. That's, of I'm sorry. Like I, that, yeah. It's a mental thing, I guess. And I'm, I I feel horrible for those poor people that they have to live that way. But, I mean, I, I don't just know don't what have, to do it. What you need to do is sell them a pole shed. What you need to do <laughs> is you need to get them out there for a, a vacation, a two-week vacation, yep. then burn the house <laughs> down. <laughs> burn that fucker to the ground. That's right down. I can so. not condone nor encourage such uh, <laughs> such, uh, the such acts, network. So, well, yeah, yeah, not allow that. To, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, like it was nothing really big. It's a short article. It's just something I'm really passionate about. Um, like we've all we've talked about the the um, skeleton and the finger and the bell and the trinkets all found in coal. I mean, these all date back 200 million years ago, and uh, and I think my like, my biggest purpose of when we started the show was just trying to get out there and, and kind of inform people that you know the world isn't yeah you know what you think it is. And you don't have to believe everything I say. But, I mean, please don't question. That's what yeah. we do. Yeah, but just your you reality. Know, yeah, don't don't sit there and just because you watched it on TV of one of your favorite shows or something that just automatically assume that's the way it is. I mean, we're wrong. You know that that's the biggest thing too. I, I what 
upsets me, you know, professionally, personally, and in, in the world altogether is that people think that they're right and they can't admit to being wrong. And I mean, that's and then, the then they'll thing. stick to that long past everybody else, yeah. to, you know, is, is in agreement that they're incorrect, but they, they stick to it. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't understand what, what benefit that has to human nature denying, know. you know, when you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, know, you can't grow if you can't say I'm wrong. If, if someone comes up and says, Hey, you did this wrong. And then, you know, you got those, and we've all met them. Oh no, that's yeah. the way I was taught or any other other thing. But, I'm the exact opposite. Oh, I did something wrong. Please, you know, inform me. That's the only way I'm gonna, you know, get grow better. And get better. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So, but that's yeah. That's it. I mean, I encourage everybody to go out and do your own research, of course. But I love this one. It was just because it's so uh, modern. Too. You know what is crazy about New Mexico in general, too, is that you know, just the other day, I, I heard that they found some pentaceratops instead of a triceratops dinosaur. They found a pentaceratops, which is the five horned. Oh. Uh, dinosaur in new mexico and so what a great like ground to find just weird old fossilized stuff it the the climate there must have been just perfect to to save this sort of stuff it's interesting we have area 51 and we have all that other stuff around that area Yeah, how many ufo crashes you know (laughs) the indians have a lot of what well i've done a little research on that lately and a lot of stuff out out there in the new mexico area and and the what were the hopis Hopis? where yeah where were the hopis out was that new mexico Mexico, uh, i'd have to look but they had some weird ufo stuff scratched on the side of caves man yeah i don't know if i cover it in one of the next episodes but the uh, they're talking about how all religions everywhere is, uh, talks about this and that, but the Hopis have a um, star gods too. But their their story is really interesting. Oh no, it's the giants. I might be covering that. I don't want to get into okay, it. We'll right, see what happens. Yeah, 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 we'll do it later. It expands past our footprint. Because uh, <laughs> I like the carbon, our carbon footprint. Anyway, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. As always, guys, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you want us to cover something, just like Sherrod did, uh, don't be afraid to throw it in the comments below, and we'll take a look at her. I might have to start divvying these out to you guys, because they're, they're going to start coming in like this. Oh, I'm not good. Gonna yeah, that'd be fun. So, awesome, yeah. Uh, Sophie's, yours is next week. I didn't forget about you. And uh, don't forget to go to the K2D4 network and check us out. Take care.